with me for the meditation for lesson 135. If I defend myself, I am attacked. Defend the body and you have attacked your mind. The self that needs protection is not real. The body, valueless and hardly worth the least defense, need merely be perceived as quite apart from you. And then it will become a healthy, serviceable instrument through which the mind can operate until its usefulness is over. Who would want to keep it when its usefulness is done? If I defend myself, I am attacked. Let us rest from senseless planning and from every thought that blocks the truth from entering our minds. Today we will receive instead of plan that we may give instead of organize. And we are given truly, as we say, if I defend myself, I am attacked. But in defenselessness, I will be strong and I will learn what my defenses hide. Everything we need is given us for our accomplishment of this today. We make no plans for how it will be done, but realize that our defenselessness is all that is required for the truth to dawn upon our minds with certainty. If I defend myself, I am attacked, but in defenselessness I will be strong and I will learn what my defenses hide.
If I defend myself, I am attacked. This is Ken Wapnick. I prefaced our discussion of the previous lesson by speaking of the ego's plan for salvation or forgiveness. In doing so, I linked the lesson up with lessons 135 and 136. To review the plan, the ego first establishes the reality of sin and guilt based on the actual separation from God. It tells us next that sin and guilt are so agrarious that they have to be denied and never looked at again, lest God's wrathful vengeance descend, destroying us as punishment for our sin. We magically save ourselves from guilt's horrific nature by projecting it from the mind where it is perceived and experienced in the body. In Lesson 134, the ego's plan, Forgiveness to Destroy, deals with its need to project the mind's guilt onto someone else's body, a guilt we then presume to forgive. In Lesson 136, the next lesson, the plan calls for the ego to project guilt onto our own body, making us sick. In this lesson, the focus is on the ego's plan of dealing with the variety of problems that arise from guilt's projection, each of which demands plans or defenses, the two words that are used synonymously here to protect us from dangers perceived outside us, having us believe the problem is not within our minds but in the world of bodies. The ego calls for a plan, i.e. defenses, to solve the problem. This strategy is Lesson 135's focus. By the way, this lesson is the longest in the workbook, well over four pages, and an extremely important one as well. The theme of this lesson, If I Defend Myself, I Am Attacked, is reminiscent of the line from the two pictures in the, in the text. All defenses do what they would defend. The purpose of defenses is to protect us from fear. Yet building a defense reinforces our sense of vulnerability that along with the perception of danger justifies our need for defense. Without fear, there is no need for protection. And so having defenses means we are afraid. Thus we see that though the purpose of a defense is to protect us from fear, it only reinforces it. Finally, the lesson explains that when I believe I need defense, I attack myself by denying I am the invulnerable son of God, I'm sorry, son that God created. As part of his loving oneness, there could be nothing outside me and certainly nothing that could threaten me. However, when I plan for my defense, I state I am not invulnerable. To the contrary, I say that I am. That is the attack. And I'm going to read this from chapter 10, section 2, paragraph 5. All attack, all attack is self-attack, capital S. It cannot be anything else arising from your own decision not to be what you are. It is an attack on your identification. Attack is thus the way in which your identification is lost. Because when you attack, you must have forgotten what you are. Try not to shape this day as you believe would benefit you most. The way that you believe this day would benefit you most is if your specialness needs are met. Therefore, not only as an ongoing practice of this lesson, but of every lesson every day, try to be aware of the ego's secret plan to protect your individuality against your mind choosing against it. The plan that says, I want to exist with someone else held responsible for it. Thus, you see the cause of your unhappiness outside yourself, which is beyond true correction. And this is, I'm reading from the lesson. 
for you cannot conceive of all the happiness that comes to you without your planning. Learn today, and all the world will take this giant stride and celebrate your Easter time with you. Throughout the day, as foolish little things appear to raise defensiveness in you and tempt you to engage in weaving plans, remind yourself this is a special day for learning. This is my Easter time and I would keep it holy. I will not defend myself because the Son of God needs no defense against the truth of his reality. Choosing Jesus as our teacher allows us to grow in his love, that we grow to remember our reality. What enables us to climb the ladder home is realizing we are one. The seeming differences that confront us are superficial, for we are unified in sharing the same insane thought system and need to, to defend against it. Some people whom we like defend in nice ways. Others whom we judge against defend in not so nice ways. In the end, however, we all do the same thing. Remember, special love and special hate look different, but they share the one purpose of preserving our guilt at someone else's expense. Perceiving the unity of our egos, therefore, allows us to remember our unity as God's one Son, as we defenselessly resurrect our holy minds from the hell of the ego's world of sin. This is my Easter time, and I would keep it holy. I will not defend myself, because the Son of God needs no defense against the truth of his reality. I love you. Thank you so much for joining with me today. Have a beautiful day, and I will see you tomorrow.